Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to use what we've talked about so far in this chapter with probability to actually design simulations where we would actually do some of the actual experiments. Now, it doesn't always make sense to actually do the actual item, to actually do the actual experiment. So we're going to do what's called a simulation. So a simulation of a real situation is an experimental model that attempts to capture all the aspects of the original situation that affect the outcomes. A simulation allows people to plan and predict examples of simulations for which it would be impractical, impractical or not feasible to wait for the real event to gather data. So for example, you wouldn't want to actually do real crash tests to determine some data, or you wouldn't want to wait till after the election to figure out how people are going to vote. Um, you wouldn't want to actually set fires to actually learn about what would be the best way to, or what are the best ways to leave a building. Um, so there are ways for us to create simulations to um, get these different results. So in this lesson, we're going to simulate an experiment by assigning numbers to possible outcomes. And your calculator is going to do that for us. So we're going to learn how to use our calculator to create this first simulation. So it says, a manufacturer of sugar oat cereals promoting sales by putting a sports star's trading card in each box. The cards are randomly distributed, so the chance of obtaining each one is equally likely. Children are encouraged to collect a set of all four cards. Bobby wants his parents to buy this cereal, but they think they may need to buy many boxes in order to get all four cards. So what we're going to do here to create this simulation is, let's say uh, these are just four quarterbacks. These are actually quarterbacks that are in the 2015 uh, national championships to see who will go to the Super Bowl. But these are the, the four remaining quarterbacks uh, for this year. So let's say these are the four trading cards. What we do is we assign a number, one through four, for each of these uh, players' trading card. Now, we're going to use our calculator, so why don't you get out your calculator. And we're going to use what's called the random integer on our calculator to figure out how long it would take us to get all four of the players. So what we would do is, on your calculator, go to a calculator screen. And our goal is to get a random integer. So we're going to go to menu under probability. Whoops, probability. Go to random. Now there's some different options. We want to make sure that we select a random integer. Now, what we're going to do is we want to select a random integer. Again, our card numbers are 1, 2, 3, and 4. So our smallest number is 1. And we want to tell this, our calculator, that our largest number that we're going to choose from is 4. Now we're going to do 1, comma 4. The comma is down here next to the O. So 1, comma, 4 tells us that, or tells the calculator that we're going to randomly choose an integer from 1 to 4 and hit enter. So the calculator automatically uh, selected the number 4. So now what we can do is rather than having to go through that whole process, if you hit the up arrow twice and hit enter, so it selects that and hit enter again, it copies and pastes it for us. So again, we're going to do a random integer from 1 to 4, hit enter again. So this time it selected two. So we want to figure out how long it would take for us to get all four trading cards. So here we go. So it took us five trials for us to get all cards one through four. Now what we could do is we could, so that was one trial. So in our first trial, it took us five attempts. And we could repeat this trial a number of times and average them together. And that would tell us how many times on average it would take us to get all four cards. And that would give us an idea of how many boxes of this cereal we would have to buy. So we could do this experiment without actually having to go to the store and buy the boxes. Now this kind of experiment is what we call the Monte Carlo method. And we're going to perform this Monte Carlo method a number of times today. So first off, let's look at, well, what is the Monte Carlo method? To figure out the Monte Carlo method, we're going to do these three steps, which the first step is to determine how to model a situation. So with this particular uh, situation with the playing cards, we figured out that, okay, we're going to number, use the numbers 1 through 4, and we assigned a different player to each of those numbers, and then define what a trial will be and what, will, how, and, and what will be recorded. So for this example... We uh, did a trial from using the random numbers from 1 to 4, and we recorded the, uh, the numbers that we got. And specify, specify the number of trials and how the estimated answer will be obtained. So what we did is we figured out, well, maybe we do the trial. We didn't actually do this, but maybe we do the trial 20 times. 
We do each trial 20 times and average them together, and that will figure out how many times or how many boxes we would need to get to get all four playing cards. Or let's look at this next example. It says, suppose that 24 tickets are sold for, the, uh, for an airplane, for a small plane, and the probability of arrival for each pas passenger is 90%. Use a simulation to estimate how many of the 24 passengers will show up. Because there are times where people don't show up for their flights. So again, this is saying that we're assuming that 90% of the passengers actually show up. So we're going to use our calculator to figure out um, how many no-shows we would get in, one, in each trial. So again, 24 tickets are going to be sold. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to use, so 90% of the time they don't show up. So it would make sense if 90% of the time they don't show up to use the digits 0 through 9. Because then we could, what we could do is we could assign the number 0 being that someone doesn't show up. And then the number is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 would represent uh, that they do show up. Okay, so 0 represents that they don't show up. The numbers 1 through 9 then would represent the, number, the times that they do show up. Because that represents 90% of those digits, and 10% of the digits, the 0, represents not showing up. So on our calculator, here's how we're going to do one trial. So again, um, one, trial is get, one trial is going to be 24 tickets. So your calculator will do this all in one shot. So we're going to go through this process again. So do menu. Probability, random, make sure you do random integer. And we're going to tell our calculator, we're going to start with 0, randomly pick a number from 0 to 9. And we're going to tell the calculator to do this 24 times. And watch what happens. So if I hit up, it selects that information. If I hit the arrow uh, to the right or to the left, what I'll do now is I can move across these numbers. So what we see here is we see that we have 24 random integers from 0 to 9. Now this is my first trial. I want to count up in this trial how many zeros I have because that tells me in that first trial how many people did not show up. And I see in this first trial we have just this one time where someone did not show up. Um, so let's go back to our notes here. So we have a table that we create. So in that first trial, we had zero no-shows. and that or I'm sorry, one no-show, one zero. And that means that we had 23 people show up. So let's go and do this again now. So go back to our calculator. We're going to do this five times. So again, all I have to do is go up and select that previous, the random integer, zero to nine, using the number zero to nine in 24 trials or 24 uh, numbers. Um, so they hit enter again. And so now we're going to count up how many zeros we have this time. So here we have 1, 2, and 3. So is that just 3? So we just go back over this again. 1, 2, 3 times. Oh, no, 4 times. Looks like 4 times here. So we have 4 zeros. So this time we had 4 no-shows. So that means we had 20 people actually show up for their flight. Let's do this again. So let's count the number of zeros. So we have one, two, three no shows this time. So that means 21 showed up. And let's do this two more times. Now we have one right off the bat, two, three, four, five no shows this. So that means twenty or nineteen would show up. And one last time. And again, your calculator is probably giving you different answers because it's randomly selecting your own numbers. Um, so you might have different slightly different numbers here. But the result should be pretty close to being the same as what I get. So this time I get, uh, let's see, 1, 2 no-shows. So 
That means 22 people actually showed up. So now here's this, the question. It says, use a simulation to estimate how many of the 24 passengers will show up. So what we're going to do is we're going to add up the numbers that we got here for our shows. So 23 plus 20 plus 21 plus 19 plus 22. We're going to average those together. So I'm going to divide those by 5. So if we do that on our calculator, if I do uh, 23, whoops, let me do this. So we're going to do uh, 23, 23 plus 20 plus the 21 plus the 19 plus the 22. I want to hit enter so my calculator will figure out our sum. So there's 105 shows. But divide that by 5 and we get 21 as our answer. So about 21 passengers on average. Now this was my simulation. But you should have gotten something pretty close. Maybe you got a decimal, in which case you would round up or down, depending on what it was closest to. Um, I've done this in the past and gotten closer to 22 passengers on average. So, But this just gives us an idea of uh, how many passengers out of 24 usually will show up. Now let's look at this from a different perspective. Let's say assuming a 90% probability that a given passenger shows up for a flight. Estimate how many tickets should be sold in order to fill all 24 tickets. Now this one we're going to do slightly different. Now there's a, a, another possible way that, way that we could do this, and this is by using uh, a paper table. Most textbooks will have a table of random integers. Our textbook has that in the back. Um, it'll look something like this. And so what you could do with a table of random numbers is you don't always want to start at the same spot. You want to start because we could have done the same example that we just did where we were looking at 24 different results. And I could have just, let's see, this would be, there's five numbers in each section here, so this would be 5, 10, 15, 20. So I could have looked at those 24 uh, numbers and said, well, in those 24 numbers, we had one, two zeros. So I could have done the simulation this way. So if you don't have a uh, TI Inspire or a, sci or a uh, scientific calculator that will do uh, the random numbers, this is another way that we can get those, is by looking at a table of random numbers. So like I said, most textbooks will have that. But again, you always want to be randomly picking numbers. So you could start in the middle. So I could have started here and done 5, 10, 15, 20. So I could have done 24 numbers there. Um, if I do start picking numbers, like let's say if I want to do these, so this would be 5, 10, 15, 20. So 24 would be here. So I could maybe do those four simulations and then maybe pick some more from down here. So you just want to make sure that when you're using a ran table of random numbers that you're still being random and not always just picking and starting in this top corner. Otherwise, you're always going to be using the same set of numbers. But let's look at this next example. So this next example, again, is still dealing with that 90% probability that a given passenger shows up for a flight. We want to estimate how many tickets should be sold in order to fill all 24 seats. Now, with this, let's just use a table, paper table this time. We're going to randomly select um, twenty, or we're going to randomly select rows in this case, and figure out how long it would take to get twenty-four seats filled. So here's how we would do that. Again, we're going to use zero as representing our empty seats. So let's say if I use this first row numbers here, I'm going to count. So again, zero represents an empty seat. I want to figure out how long it would take for me to fill all twenty-four seats. So in that first row, I would have 1. I'm not going to count the zeros, remember, because that's, that's someone that doesn't show up. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So it took me a total of 30 numbers here because I had, here I had, um, one, two, three, four, five people that didn't show up. So it took me 30 passengers to be able to get, or 30 tickets sold before I get all 24 seats because the airlines wants to fill all, of our, all their seats. Um, so they want to, so in this case here, if they sold 30 tickets, then they would fill the 24 seats. 
So that would be my first trial. So in this case here, whoops. We'll do this uh, five times again. In the first tri trial, I would need 30 tickets sold in order to before all 24 seats would be filled. So now let's do this trial again. Uh, let's pick something in the middle here this time. Let's use these numbers. Let's figure out how long it would take me, starting with 16376, um, until I would get all um, 24 seats filled. So again, we do not count the zeros. So here I'd have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So it would take me this time 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29 tickets sold before all 24 seats were actually filled. So in my second trial, I got 29 as my answer. So now let's do this again for, uh, let's say if I select this row. So again, we're trying to count up the number of times. We're not going to count the zeros. We're going to count up to see how long it would take to get up to 24. So I would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So this time, it took me 25 tickets sold before I could get, uh, before I filled up all uh, 24 seats. So let's say if I continued this out, and let's say if um, I did another one and got 23, and another one to get 28. Again, we want to do it for real, but just for time's sake. Let's say we got those situations. Then what I would do is I would find the average of these numbers. So I would take 30 plus 29 plus 25 plus 23 plus 28. Divide that by 5. And that would tell me approximately how much tickets I would want to sell to make sure that I would fill all 24 seats. And in this example, we end up getting 27 as our answer. So we would want to sell about 27 tickets to ensure that all 24 seats would end up being filled. And this is, and this is what airline companies uh, often do. That's why oftentimes they'll wait until you uh, check in to get your seat assignment uh, because they want to make sure that they get all the seats filled. And that's why sometimes they're overbooked, and so they'll ask people to um, take a different flight on a different plane, um, and, and they'll give away free stuff to, and to uh, motivate people to make those changes. But otherwise, this is why they do that, because they want to try to fill up uh, the seats, and so this is why that happens. So next, we're going to look at this uh, simulation, where we have two brown-eyed parents can have a blue-eyed child if they each carry a recessive gene for blue eyes. Assume that in these cases, the probability of blue eyes is 1 in 4, and the probability of brown eyes is 3 in 4. We're going to design a simulation to estimate the probability of having exactly one of three children with brown eyes. So to do that, we're going to assign digits 1, 2, 3, and 4 to represent the eye, col eye color when one child is born. So for that, we'll have 1 representing blue eyes, and then we'll have... Uh, two, three, and four representing having a child with brown eyes. So we're going to simulate 40 trials of three child families and record the results. So now it sounds like a lot, but for a situation like this, it can go rather quickly. So let's go to our calculator now. So if you haven't done so already, why don't you go to a new calculator screen. So we have nothing else up here because we'll need that, and I'll show you why here in a second. So what we want to do is we want to tell our calculator that we're going to do probability. We're going to come up with random integers again. And we're going to choose random integers again from 1 to 4. And we want to find uh, the, we want to have it do a simulation where we're having three children. And so we're going to choose uh, three from these digits of 1 to 4. 
And now the nice thing is, is um, I forgot to mention this earlier, is you can just hit enter. You don't have to go back in and copy and paste it. You can just hit enter. And it'll repeat this. Now look down here in the bottom right corner. That represents 2 out of 90. So this will fill up 99 different entries. So we can use this to our adv advantage. Because we want to do this experiment, we want 40 trials. So right now I have two trials. So I'm going to keep hitting enter until we get to 40. There we go. So now we have 40 trials that have been completed where they've randomly selected integers uh, from 1 to 4. Or I should say randomly selected three integers from 1 to 4. Now the question is asking us to find the uh, probability, to estimate the probability that a family with three children has exactly one uh, child with brown eyes. So in other words, we could also interpret that as saying uh, the number of times where we have uh, two children with blue eyes, which in my scenario, I ended with this. So what we want to do is you want to go through, and you're going to do the same thing on yours. You're going to go through and you're going to count all the times where we have two ones, and then the other number would re represent uh, a child with brown eyes. And so let's go through and do that. So we're going to just arrow up. And so there's our first one. There's two, three, four, so I'm up to four. There's a fifth one, so I'm up to five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So in this simulation, never had it happen that many times, but in this simulation I had uh, ten situations out of those forty where I had um, once exactly one student or one child uh, with brown eyes. So I would have 10 out of 40, which is easy to figure out, would be 25% chance. So that's in this scenario, in this simulation, but obviously in your simulation, um, you uh, might have a different answer. In fact, um, I did it uh, previously in one of my class periods, and we had 13% of the time where it happened. So obviously there could be a spread because this is simply a simulation. Um, so that's it. That is how we use your calculators. That's most of what this lesson was about, how to use your calculator to find uh, simulations here. So hopefully now you'll have an understanding of how you can design your own simulations. And good luck now as you work on your assignment.